Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This match is going to be part of the Cotter Cup semifinals. For $1,000 on the line, this match between Harvard, starting at the 6 o'clock position, represented by Comrade, and Princeton University, 12 o'clock position, represented by Agony, the Blue Zerg. And it is going to be on destination. It's about even as far as Protoss versus Zerg play. I think Protoss have a slight edge by just about 5%, so nothing too crazy. If you guys are unfamiliar with this map, you've got this mineral patch which can open up that back door. Usually it's Zerg who take advantage of that to try to flood Zergings in early. Just because generally Protoss go for fast expansions on this map. So I haven't seen any... I, I'm trying to think if I've even seen a game where Protoss has gone 2-gate. Two 2-gate two not very effective just because these ramps are pretty easily blockaded. Um, and it's just, yeah, there's a decent distance. Uh, there's a lot of other factors actually. Also ramp which you can defend. It's just better to go fast expansion, I think. And the fast expansion is fairly easy to defend because, again, because of these little troop funnels. It's hard to get troops across those, especially into the mid-game. Looks like we are going to see a fast expansion here from Comrade, setting up that first pylon to get that forge in position. And it looks like on the opposite end, we're either going to see an overpool or some sort of build uh, on t the 12th drone. Anyway, otherwise, yeah, you've got that mineral patch which can be opened to just flood troops into that back edge. Mineral only, bottom left-hand corner, 3 o'clock position, and 9 o'clock position, there's additional expansions. The 3 o'clock, at least at this location, a little bit easy to defend, easier to defend, and then just kind of mirrored around the map. You also have this kind of upper location, which usually doesn't come into play uh, with the two ramps, and I haven't seen many games where that's really come to play. Special shout-out to Hazel, by the way, doing a lot of the organization for this. So the probe coming around, it's going to try to... <laughs> this is clever. Using the drone to try to get a hit in a blockade, and that's going to really lock Comrade into the mode. He's like, oh, i got to get in. So immediately pushing, and then he realizes, wait a minute, that was going to go put down a, a hatchery, and trying to swing back around to disrupt the hatchery, not quite able to. Still probably going to swing around, try to do a little disruption otherwise. Has that forge already building. Will be able to go Nexus first. Doesn't look like he's going to cancel the forge to get that Nexus uh, a little bit sooner. Going to play a little bit safer in that regard. Now the spawning pool going down uh, across that gas to speed up mining across that uh, gas pool and that probe scout. Still just getting an eyeful of information. Doesn't look like he's going to bother going up and pressuring any of the drones at this stage. Just wants to try to keep it alive um, and try to keep his scout going. Anyway, yeah, the Cotter Cup in memory of uh, basically a Princeton University student decided to sponsor a StarCraft tournament to uh, remember his brother who loves StarCraft and he put a thousand dollar prize pool on the way. We've actually got guys, uh, we have a university from Korea that's been involved, a university from China, a uh, university from Sweden, all the Ivy Leagues. I don't think I'm missing anyone. If I am, uh, shoot. Cholera is going to be doing a live cast of the finals this night, so Saturday night at 9.30. I think this is May 8th, just in case you guys, May 9th, in case you guys are watching this deep into the future. And a three-hatch build, very quick, uh, wow, third hatch before even uh, additional overlords or even zerglings being produced. So stopping drone production to get that quick third hatchery um, really wants to get that production advantage early. So which really suggests to me is you might even see all in Lang here because that hatchery going up very, very quickly um, to produce a lot of infantry into the mid-game. We'll see how he can use that. Looks like a lot of Zerglings being produced, perhaps thinking about going for a run-by. Um, although he is building a drone rather than some Zerglings here at the secondary, that probe scout now trying to, to get out. <clears throat> Usually this is a problem, though, is when you get, when you pull that probe scout off that ramp, it's really hard to get back up in that ramp and immediately taken out. So now it looks like Comrade's going to be playing in the dark not a fun situation. Going, uh, Playing a little bit on the cheap, going for a cannon. Actually, two cannons. One cannon in that back hedge to defend uh, this natural secondary nexus. This is actually going to make the run-by easier if if we do see a run-by, simply because this usually two cannons on the front can pick off a couple Zerglings, but this cannon at the off position, no real obstacles for the Zerglings running up the ramp. They can take this short lane and really not have all that much trouble running straight in. It looks like the Overlord checking out the main. Let's see if it wanders out to that secondary to really spot this. I assume as soon as he sees that, he's just going to go and make a, a direct run at the secondary. Looks like Comrade playing a little bit nervously. He's having a little. He's extremely late on his troop transfer to the secondary to get that drone saturation there. It looks like the Zerglings now wandering up a little bit. Let's see if he tests it anyway. There's that first zealot being produced. Looks like a second zealot being produced almost immediately. And now a uh, quick tech to layer actually. So I was expecting to see more tr infantry because of that the the pause on the drone production. Um, it looks like the Zerglings testing the front door, backing off, actually. I think they've, if they had just uh, been a little more committal, losing a single Zergling and just run straight through, they would have had some success. Um, even without speed, looks like speed is now being upgraded. Hydra is then going down, so it is going to be a three-hatch uh, three hatch Hydra build. I zoom into Lurkers once again to just... Lurkers are so powerful on these ramps. Another probe scout being sent out. Oh, the Zerglings are going to miss it, and that was really their critical 
that was their job right there. You guys are failing at your job to stop that probe scout from getting out to deny information. Let's see if some more uh, Zerglings are going to be produced. There are three more Zerglings in the base. If they wander back down and they manage to get on these ramps, that will con that will continue to deny the scout. Looks like that Overlord just going to sit over the secondary, even though it looks like most of the tech is um, happening over the main. Still no, no probes being transferred, though. The probe does manage to sneak through. Uh... Looks like they are going to be able to block the ramp, but really, no, actually able to take that scout out. Comrade not really able to get a good look at that second extractor going down, uh, as well as the drone saturation on the secondary. And actually, that drone saturation, uh, that second extractor really suggests that he would be going for Mulus build, but it looks like uh, he is just going to store up some gas, probably from lurkers. He's already got some hydralists starting to move out and running up to cr get another contain. Um, speed upgraded Zerglings, and once again, I think they could be successful with the run by a lot of zealots being produced. So there's four zealots right now. Looks like Cybernetic Score being built very late, so it's very fortunate actually for Comrade that he wasn't facing a Mulus build. Otherwise, uh, he would be absolutely getting crushed right now. Because of the uh, the mutalisks up in the air, you'd have nothing to stop them, essentially. Uh, looks like uh, two pylons going down in the middle of his base, so he's going to set down uh, a bunch more gateways. I assume that's why he's saving his minerals at this stage. But it's going to be a little bit late. A lot of the hydralisks now running up to, to set up a contain. Let's see if Lurker Tech... I don't see Lurker Tech being upgraded. And now a Spire being put down in that back edge. Perhaps the lack of Corsair is kind of tipping him off. Um, Armor 1 being upgraded instead of Weapons 1, which is... Interesting play. I'm kind of curious what he's going to be up to with that. Maybe um, this is very off balance. It's very uh, untypical. So let's see if we see a lot of zealots. They're just going to try to keep alive longer. Now a Stargate and another gateway being placed. Um, and it's a very solid contain now for for Agony. Agony's got a very nice uh, kind of contain. It looks like he's going to run the Hydralisks in try to tempt that front door. The zealots aren't speed upgraded, so these Hydralisks... Um, they sh oh, actually, they're not range upgraded either. So, oh, wow, an attack uh, coming in from from Agony. It looks like he's going to be able to take out a couple of Zealots, but without the speed for the Hydralisks or the range, um, he's not going to be able to accomplish a lot. Let's see if he tries that again once he... Actually, it doesn't look like he's upgrading it either. Um, let's see if he tries that again with either more troops or with, uh, with the upgrades alongside. It's really hard to break that front door without upgrades. Zerg's Queen's Nest, so very quick tech to hive. Two evolution chambers down. Which, uh, suggests kind of an, a, a Defiler Ling combo. So uh, looks like Defiler Ling into the late game. Cracklings to get that uh, the speed, and it looks like he might be thinking about uh, he's getting Overlord speed right now to to counter the Corsairs. But let's see if he thinks about a drop in the late game as well. Drops can be very effective on this map. Interestingly enough. Comrade not taking the expansions. He's got basically, he's not taking an additional base, which surprises me, because he's got his Protoss opponent sealed in. He's got some troops on the front door. Is not morphing lurkers. Okay, there he's got lurkers about halfway done. I expected that a little bit sooner. Looks like that first Corsair is finally going to be produced um, a little bit late. Uh, looks, uh, let's see if it 